Hello, my name is Douglas Rombaugh, and in this video I would like to kick off a short series of videos on learning the basics of the Vim text editor. Now, most of what I'm going to talk about, or probably all of what I'm going to talk about, you can easily figure out on your own through the help text and documentation. In fact, Vim has built in a very nice tutorial mode called Vim Tutor. So if you just run Vim Tutor, it will show you all of the basics. And I highly encourage you to, uh, to run through this. However, I do recognize that for some people, uh, hearing things explained is a better way of getting started on something complicated than just running through a text-based thing like this. So we'll talk a little bit about some of the basics for those of you who like to learn that way. Now, to begin with, the Vim editor is probably installed, but not necessarily installed on your Linux box. So Vim is an improved, modernized version of an, a very old school Linux editor called V, VI. Now, VI is basically guaranteed to be included in every Linux distribution. And most of what we are going to talk about will work in VI. Uh, you'll note that on some Linux distributions like mine, Pop! OS here, VI actually le is aliased to Vim. But just to be sure that you have it, you may want to attempt to install it with your package manager to make sure you actually have Vim. Now to begin with, Vim is going to work on the command line side of things just like most other text editors. So you can either launch Vim with no arguments, at which point it just opens up a blank document, or you can edit a document by typing Vim and then the name of the document that you want to edit, and it will pull that document right up. Uh, now, one thing that you may notice very quickly upon launching the Vim editor and opening up a document is that when you start typing, uh, it doesn't necessarily type those letters into your document. It does, it either beeps at you or the cursor flies everywhere or suddenly the entire document gets deleted. You know, there's any number of things that can happen, but unless you hit the right key, you'll notice that no text gets written into the document. Now this is because Vim is what's called a modal text editor. And what that means is that it uses modes. So at any given moment, Vim is in a particular mode and the mode that you're in is going to determine what the different keys do. So by default, when you first launch Vim, you're going to be in what's called either normal mode, or you'll also hear it called command mode sometimes. Uh, the two words pretty much mean the same thing. You can use them interchangeably, although I will warn you that using command mode, although it is commonly used, uh, if you say it to the wrong person, you might get yelled at and called an idiot because people find that very important. I don't know. But uh, normal and command mode, both words are fine for this. I think based on doing a little bit of digging that command mode was what it was called back in the VI days. And then in Vim, it's technically called normal mode, but it doesn't make a big difference. In any case, in this mode, whether you call it normal or command mode, the keys on your keyboard are going to correspond to editor commands. So when you type J, rather than the letter J coming up, the cursor moves. Now, if you want to actually enter text into the document, you have to enter insert mode, at which point the keys are going to be correspond to actual text entry like you would normally expect. So the first command, so to speak, that you should probably pick up in Vim is how to get into insert mode. There are actually many different ways of doing it that we'll talk about as we go. For now, for the absolute bare basic, just getting started, I want insert mode now, I. The I key will put you in insert mode. So you will notice when I hit the I key, it says insert down here, telling me what mode I'm in. And now my keys do the normal typing the letters as you would expect. Now, when you're done typing text, if you want to get out of insert mode, all you have to do is hit the escape key and the escape key will return you back to normal mode. So no pretty much no matter where you are, if you mash escape a couple of times, you'll get back to normal mode. So that's a good thing to know if you get lost and things are just beeping everywhere, as sometimes happens, just 
mash the escape key a few times and you should get back to normal mode, at which point you're in control again. Now, additionally, if you'd rather not reach up and hit the escape key, you can actually do the same thing by holding down the control key and typing the open bracket. Uh, so that is the one right next to P. That will also get you back to normal mode whenever you type that. It's kind of, it's the control, the control sequence that corresponds to escape. So it gets treated just like escape does. Personally, what I've done on my keyboard is I've remapped escape and caps lock. And actually, if you're interested in doing that and you happen to be running GNOME, uh, there's a little card up at the top that will take you to a video where I, I show you how to do that in GNOME. It's quite convenient to have escape right there when you're using the VI editor. So now we can enter insert mode, we can type text, and we can leave insert mode. Uh, the other thing that's going to be very important for you to be able to do is move around the file, move the cursor. So the way you do that is technically the arrow keys work. So if you use the arrow keys, whether you're in normal mode or even in insert mode, uh, the arrow keys will move the cursor around. However, those aren't the best way of doing it. And in fact, in the next video in this series, when we talk a little bit about configuration, I will walk you through disabling the arrow keys completely so that they don't do anything, which is a good thing to do when you're learning because it will force you to do this quote unquote correctly. Now, the quote unquote correct way of navigating is with the H, J, K, and L keys on your keyboard. You'll note these fall right on the home row. They're quite convenient to access without moving your hand very far. So the way this works is the J key is going to move your cursor down a line. So you hit J a few times, we go down. K is going to move your cursor up. H goes to the left and L is going to go to the right. Now it takes it takes a bit of getting used to moving around like this, but once you get used to it, it is a very nice and convenient way of doing it that doesn't require moving your hand across the keyboard to get to the arrow keys. And actually what's quite neat is that a lot of other applications support these VI like key bindings. For example, Pop Shell and Pop OS uh, if you hold down if you hold down your uh, Windows key, you can actually use H, J, K, and L to move around the windows in the same way that you would move around inside of um, Vim. If you want to actually quit Vim, you're going to have to know a third mode. So so far we've seen normal slash command mode, and we have insert mode. You also have command line mode, which is not to be confused with command mode. They are different things. How this works is if you hold down shift and press semicolon, basically if you type a colon, when you're in normal mode, it will open up a little command line for you down here. Now, technically what this command line does is it allows you to punch through into the underlying editor that Vim is built on top of, which is something called EX. It's a really old school line editor. You don't have to worry about what that means, but we can use this to execute commands that process the whole document, among other things. So we'll see this when we get into doing things like um, word substitution and things of that nature. But for the moment, we're going to use it to execute the EX commands for save and for quit. So the EX command for save is W. So what you want to do is, from normal mode, type a colon to get into command line mode, type a W, and hit enter and that will save the file. Now to quit, it's colon to get into command line mode and Q, and that will quit. The, the other thing you wanna be aware of is you, you cannot just quit the file without saving first, so it will stop you from quitting before you've saved. This is just a safety measure so you don't accidentally lose work. If you want to quit without saving, it tells you what to do, add an exclamation mark to override, so just do a Q followed by a bang like that, and that will get you out of there without saving. And then finally, uh, you can actually combine W and Q together in one command like this to save and quit. Finally, 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 if you want to save as, if you want to save it to a different file name, you can do W and then new name .txt like this. So type the new name you want to save it to, and that will write it out to that new file name. 
However, it leaves the original document open, which can get a little confusing. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So just to quickly summarize what we've gone over here, and use the right editor. We've seen the three major modes in Vim. There are more. We'll get to more of them as we go. But just to begin with, these are the three. Normal mode and command mode are for moving around the file. Insert mode is for entering text. And then the command line mode is for EX commands. And we've seen a couple normal mode commands. I for entering insert mode. H, J, K, and L for navigating the cursor around the file. And escape for returning to normal mode. You can mash escape from anywhere in any mode. And if you hit it enough times, you'll end up back in normal mode again. And we also saw some basic EX commands for saving and for quitting. So this should get you enough to get started using the editor. What I suggest you do at this point is to practice just these commands. There is a huge slew of different things that you can do in Vim. It's a really deep rabbit hole. There are so many commands. There are so many different ways of doing things and so many ways of optimizing. Don't worry about that right now. When you are first getting started with this, if you get this functionality down, that gets you all of your really basic text editor functionality. If you get good at this, that's your starting point. Get comfortable navigating the file. Get comfortable with insert mode and command mode. One thing that you should get comfortable with as well is, is this. Um, use normal mode, command mode for navigation, insert mode for text inserting. So it, when you are in insert mode, you are typing text. What you should avoid doing at all costs is getting into the habit of using the arrow keys to move the cursor while you are in insert mode. Don't do that. Insert mode is for typing text. If you want to move somewhere else in the file, hit escape, go back to normal mode, and then navigate using H, J, K, and L. So you insert is for typing. Don't navigate in insert mode. That's a bad habit to get into because as we get deeper in down the rabbit hole, we'll get far more sophisticated movement commands that you absolutely have to be in command mode to do. And at those po at that point, if you're in the habit of navigating in insert mode, it just it'll be it's a bad habit to get into. So focus on taking some time using Vim as your editor with just this basic functionality here, making sure that you are using command mode for navigating and insert mode for entering text only. And once you feel comfortable with this, then you can start moving on and adding new stuff to your toolkit. So in the next video, we're going to talk about a little bit of configuration of Vim and just some basic little tweaks you can make to make your life a little bit easier, as well as disabling those naughty arrow keys so you're not even tempted to use them. I hope that you find this interesting, and I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next video.